Good morning, everyone. As always, what you're supposed to do, place a cross on first. Why? Why? As you're supposed to. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we forgive those who trespass against us, as we forgive those who trespass against us, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Last week I did a, a quick video about betrayal. I don't know why I was just set on my mind to do it. Betrayal is one of the most deceitful things you can do to a person. Betray them. Betray their trust. Well, I'm going to talk about a, a few things in betrayal today. First, I'm going to start with Matthew chapter 26, verse 21. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceedingly sorrowful, and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him. But woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered, said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou said, Thou hast said. <laughs> wow. Wow. Then Judas, knowing the people betray you, be right, right in your face. Notice, betrayal don't come from somebody from the outside. That's one thing you got to realize about betrayal. Betrayal comes from somebody who you know. In this case, Judas was right next to him. Is it I? You have said. Like, just, then they started eating. Wow. Oh, let's, let's go to another verse about that. All right, let's see again. Luke chapter 22, starting with verse 20. Likewise also, likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. But behold, the man, the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table. And truly the Son of Man goeth as is determined. Well, woe unto this man by whom he is betrayed. Here it is again. Betrayal. What happened to this man? Well, we're going to find out. Let's go over to Acts. All right. Acts chapter 1, I believe. Oh, yeah, it is. I already, I already looked it up. <laughs> Acts chapter 1, starting with verse 15. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, The number of names together were about 120. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled. Jesus talked about the fulfillment of the things that happened to him. And he told, he prophesied in regards to this. But not only did he prophesy in regards to this, somebody else did Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. For he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. Now this man purposed, purchased the field with the reward of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. Oh. Woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been better if that man had not been born. You see, vengeance belongs to the Lord, right? The Lord avenges. The Lord saves. The Lord looks after us. The Lord protects us. The Lord knows what he's doing. And this has been prophesied for a long time. What was going to happen to Judas? Betrayal. Now, 
David was a praying man. He prayed a lot. He prayed about everything. Here's <clears throat> a psalm of David when he fled from Absalom, his son. Psalm 3. Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many of them be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, and glory and lift up of mine head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. I laid me down and slept. I wait for the Lord to sustain me. I would not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God. For thou hast smitten all my enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. See that? This is he talking about Absalom. Oh, David. Don't you just love it? Let's go to Absalom's story. Let's go to his end, his demise. Hmm. So let me give you a backstory. David messed up. He sinned against God. He took another man's wife and God punished him for it. And he repented. But God told him something was going to happen behind it. So let me just tell you something. It's because we men and women of God, we reap what we sow too. We don't go unshaved. No, no. But the thing is, David never stopped calling on God. That's the key. A man after God's own heart who never turned. He accepted the fact that he was going to have trouble in his own house for the rest of his life. All the days of your life, you will have strife in your home because of that one rebellion. That's why God doesn't want us to make certain mistakes because they'll trouble you for the rest of your life. You understand? Yeah, God is forgiving. But what I said at the beginning, in the Lord's Prayer, forgiveness. You know, forgiveness does not always Stop wrath. Eighteen. And David for second Samuel verse I mean, chapter eighteen, start with verse one. And David numbered the people that were with him and set captains of thousands and captains of hundreds over them. And David sent forth a third part of the people under the hand of Joab. And a third part under the hand of Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, Joab's brother. And a third part under the hand of Ittai, the Gittite. And the king said unto the people, I will surely go forth with you myself also. Hmm. But the people answered, Thou shalt not go forth. For if we flee away, they will not care for us. Neither if half of us die, will they care for us. But now thou art worth ten thousand of us. Therefore now it is better that thou secure us out of the city. And the king said unto them, What seem of you best I will do? And the king stood by the gate, sorry, and all the people came out by hundreds and by thousands. And the king commanded Joab and Abishai and Ittai, saying, Deal gently for my sake with the young man, even with Absalom. And all the people heard when the king gave all the captains charge concerning Absalom. So the people went out into the field against Israel, and the battle was in the wood of Ephraim. Wherefore the people of Israel were slain before the servants of David. And there was a great slaughter that day of 20,000 men. Now watch this part. For the battle was, was there scattered over the face of all the country, and the wood devoured more people that day than the sword devoured. So God let the, the forest the forest destroyed some enemies. Hmm. The wood. You know, Judas hung himself on a tree. <laughs> the wood. And Absalom met the servants of David. Absalom rode upon a mule, and the mule went under the thick boles of a great oak. And his head caught hold of the oak, the wood devoured more. 
And he was taken up between the heaven and the earth, and the mule that was under him went away. And a certain man saw it and told Joab and said, Behold, I saw Absalom hanged in an oak. And Joab said unto the man that told him, And behold, thou sawest him, and why didst thou not smite him there to the ground? And I would have given thee ten shekels of silver and a girdle. Let me say a verse that came to my mind. Evil will slay the wicked. You see, some of David's mighty men, they loved David, but some of them were evil. And some were wicked. And Absalom was wicked. And some of them were evil. Watch what happens. And the man said to Joab, Though I should receive a thousand shekels of silver in my hand, yet would I not put forth my hand against the king's son? For thou were hearing the king charge thee and Abishai and Ittai, saying, Beware that none touch the young man Absalom. Otherwise I should have wrought falsehood against my own life. But there is no matter here from the king. And thou thyself wouldest have set thyself against me. Then said Joab, I may not tarry thus with thee. And he took three darts in his hand and thrust through the heart of Absalom while he was yet alive in the midst of the oak. And ten young men that bare Joab's armor compassed about him, smote Absalom and slew him. That's got to be a horrible way to die. You hanging in the tree, you already about to die. But no, you finna die worse. Woe to that man by whom the son of man is betrayed. Woe to that man who betrays God's anointed. Touch not my anointed. Says, do my prophets no harm. Oh. Hmm. Prophecy is always fulfilled constantly. And Joab blew the trumpet, and the people returned from pursuing after Israel. For Joab held back the people. They took Absalom and cast him into a great pit in the wood and laid a very great heap of stones upon him and all Israel fled everyone to his tent now Absalom in his lifetime had taken and reared up for himself a pillar which is in the king's dale but he said I have no son to keep my name in the remembrance and he called the pillar after his own name and is called it to this day Absalom's place then said Ahimaaz the son of Zadok let me now run and bear the tidings how did the Lord have avenged him of his enemies. Our Father, we saw it in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. As we forgive those who trespass against us. You see, David loved his son. And I know he was willing to forgive him because he said, don't touch him. But sometimes, that's just not how it's going to work. You know how you got some enemies in your life that'll betray you. And if God don't do something about it, they're going to continue to betray you. And you got some people that'll betray you and think they're going to get away with it. And one thing about the wood, you got a way of taking out people. Spare the rod, spoil the child. Most rods are wood. The wood. You see, David prophesied about Jesus. You see, they called that place where the land that um, Judas bought, called it something with the blood. You know what I'm saying? That land was never able to be inhabitable. It was horrible, a horrible place. You understand? You can say it was cursed ground. You see, Absalom didn't even have any kids. This, ooh, betrayed his own father. Even though it was written, you know, David loved him. He weeped and mourned over Absalom for a long time. Sometimes it ain't up to you. No, it's never up to us. What what God decides to do, like He said, He knew Judas was gonna betray him, but He knew what was gonna happen to Judas too upon the betrayal. You see, Jesus was resurrected. 
you know, something to gain sins against certain folks. You better be careful. And we're supposed to forgive our enemies. We're supposed to love those and pray for those that spitefully use and abuse it. Woe to those that touch one of these little ones of mine. It'd be better that a millstone were hung about their neck and they were cast into the sea. The word says it all the time. Touch not my anointed. Don't mess with my servant David. Don't mess with my servant, whoever you are, at the sound of my voice. One thing you're going to realize about this world, Jesus was betrayed, you're going to be betrayed too. Some of the people who betray you are going to come to the realization and repent and be saved. Some of them aren't. And if they aren't, you already know, it ain't going to be good for them. It ain't going to be good for them. Absalom did all kind of things. Slept with his, his dad's concubines in the wide open. In front of the whole, all the children of Israel. You know, it started with a deceitful man of the wife whom he committed adultery with. Father. He was one of David's advisors. So the whole time he was advising David, he was advising to get payback. Betrayal. You see, God doesn't want you to take matters in your own hands. Oh, man. Oh, Lord. Something's dropping my head. You know, there have been things that happened in my life. People have betrayed me. People have... Oh, man. Violated my trust and my honesty. And sometimes I'm so mad I want to do something about it. Some of times I'm like, Lord, I need to go to the law. And I ain't talking about the law of the Lord. I'm talking about the law. Then I start meditating. Vengeance belongs to the Lord. How about you just rather take people doing your wrong? How about just let it happen? And then I start thinking about how you're not supposed to go to the law with nobody. According to the word of God. You're supposed to let the Lord handle it. So, a lot of times when I'm thinking all those crazy thoughts, those are the type of thoughts that come to my mind. Don't worry about it. I got you. Don't take matters in your own hands. Let them do what they do. Because guess what? They are not getting away with it. They are not getting away with it. Let them do it. Don't reward evil for evil. Vengeance belongs to the Lord. In Jesus' case, Jesus is Lord. He made sure he avenged his own death. You know, with, with Judas, he was, no telling what happened. According When you watch the movie, The Passion of the Christ, he was being tormented in his mind. Well, that's you could kind of put that as accurate, not far as accurate biblically, like it was written just like that, but... For somebody to hang themselves, they got to be going through some kind of torment in their brain. Maybe he was vexed with an evil spirit just like the movie portrayed. I don't know. But something wasn't right with Judas after he did that. And he hung himself. In some cases, it might happen like that. And sometimes it's not, it doesn't mean God is going to kill your enemies all the time. God has a perfect judgment. He knows what's best for every situation. And God does give everybody a chance to repent of their evil deeds. According to the Bible, I don't think Judas ever repented. You know, in the movie, Judas tried to give them back the money. But according to scripture, he bought some land with the money. You know, so he bought some land with it. You know, Hmm. You know, the Bible talks about getting money wickedly. It's not good. 
You understand? Let me pause for a second and we'll continue.